I think we've all clicked on a website and had a million ads pop up. So if you're like me, you probably wash your laptop to get rid of the viruses you probably got, put your laptop into some rice, wait three or four business days and install an ad blocker. If uh, someone decides that they can block ads on the internet, a lot of financial incentive for someone like Netscape to make certain that they don't block those ads. Wait, I, I thought these things were good. Like, is this actually unethical, illegal, or even really frowned upon? And what can you do to use them more responsibly? So let's answer the question. How did ad blockers become evil? My main thought is why were they even created in the first place? To get to that point, I think we have to really set the stage for where we were, so let's go back to the 90s. This was a time when the internet was nothing more than the latest fad. Computers weren't very accessible and the internet was far from reliable. But where did the internet actually exist back then? Nowadays, in case you didn't know, you can buy storage on a server online and run your website entirely through that. But back then you had to buy servers and that could cost you anywhere from $4,000 to even $20,000 just to get your website started. As your website grew, you had to buy more servers, making this a very expensive investment into something that most people didn't even have yet. So. How do you pay for it? Back in the 90s, the biggest website in the world was America Online. You could play games, chat with friends, and even catch up on regular life, like sports, for example. But to access the website, you had to pay $9.95 for every five hours you used. The average user would go through that much in a month, which is wild compared to the current average of seven hours and four minutes that Americans spend looking at their screens every single day. $9.95 for a single month of usage of one website, plus thousands of dollars for a home computer, it just wasn't accessible to most people. But why Wired had an idea, banner ads on their content. Companies could pay based on the traffic to the website to get a banner ad at the top of the page. And the first ad for AT&T launched in 1994. It's really nothing special, especially compared to the well thought out ads we have today all over the internet. But it was creative and fun. And when you clicked on it, you got to see some really neat content before the sales pitch. That ad changed the future of the internet forever though. You didn't need to make people pay. Companies could cover the costs of the website and the users could just enjoy the experience. Just like that, ads started popping up everywhere. Banner ads, sidebar ads, pop-up ads, there were so many ads everywhere from brands competing to try and get more eyeballs. Ultimately, something that was designed to improve user experience was having the opposite effect. But there was something else. Dial-up connections were really slow and loading these invasive ads took a long time. Something had to change. A company called PriveNet had an idea, a software called Internet Fast Forward that could block ads while you were browsing. They estimated that you would save four to six seconds on every single page loading up ads. If you think about how many pages you open on one session, that's a lot of time saved. Right away, a ton of people were paying for internet fast forward and the company ended up getting acquired. That all sounds splendid, right? Well, just a few months after they got acquired, they ended up discontinuing the application because it was such a big liability for lawsuits. But why? What made this application so bad? Businesses were really loving the newly revolutionized ad market because of how much it offered them. When you ran ads in the newspaper or on TV, you really didn't know who was watching. Knowing your audience is really important for making sure that the right people are seeing your ads. The right people will buy your product, the wrong people, well, they'll just waste your ad dollars. Most websites that ran ads back then were free, meaning that in exchange for using the website, they would collect data. With that data, they could sell it to advertisers, allowing them to target the audiences they wanted to hit more efficiently. So when ad blockers were invented, it was hurting their ability to get the audiences they wanted and they needed to stop. Many advertisers went onto the news to share with people that programs like these were ruining your tailored internet experience because they could provide you with great ads. But obviously this didn't work. People don't like ads, but back to that in a minute. If people were loving internet fast forward so much, why did they shut it down? Well, these ad companies needed to do something to prove a point and threatening lawsuits was the best course of action. PriveNet gave into this. The tech was new and it wasn't worth trying to fight a battle against a huge corporation for the internet at this time. I mean, what if everyone was right and the internet was just a fad? You'd waste so much money for nothing. But there's something I think we should mention here. It's not like ad blockers are totally innocent either. Businesses, especially right now, make money from ad sales. Every time a person views an ad, a website gets paid a certain amount. And this applies to me with these videos right now too. So sure, if people are paying for your platform, then whatever if you lose out on a few bucks in ad revenue. But if you're relying on those viewers to make a buck when they're actually using your platform, then having people cheating you out of that money is really bad for your bottom line. So ad blockers had the potential to ruin the 
internet and remove websites altogether. So I guess that means that ad blockers just died there and they didn't continue onwards, right? I think we know the answer to that question. In 1998, two more popped up, 99, another three. These things were popping up faster than ads on websites were at this time and people were loving it. Fast forward to 2003 and the ad block browser extension was released. It's funny, the reason we call them ad blockers all comes back to the name of this extension. Over the next few years, a community started to rally around ad block, hoping that an app would stick around for good this time. The community gave feedback, supported the project and helped it to grow to the mainstream. So using that info, Adblock released a new version called Adblock Plus in 2006 that was more fine tuned and came with filtered lists of websites that were getting blocked. These lists could be customized, meaning you could whitelist certain websites and blacklist other ones. And this was mostly because at the time, a lot of websites made it so that ads were essential to the website's functionality. So if it wasn't working, you could remove it from the list and just suffer through the ads so that you had the user experience. These filter lists were owned and operated by individual people a lot of the time. The power dynamic of this was kind of wild because if a website got around the ad blockers, the filter list owner could take it down immediately, literally block access to that website for everyone on the list. This is like a David and Goliath story where Goliath had like no chance. Keep in mind that at this time, the internet was all the rage, but it was an infant compared to what it is now. Gen Z kids like me were using the internet for the first time ever, and parents were only just understanding that it might be around for some time to come. Because demand was flowing in, technical advancements were happening faster than it ever happened before. This was like the industrial revolution of the internet. So let's fast forward in time just a little bit here. In 2013, advertisers had had enough. So Google took action first, removing all ad blockers from the Play Store. To this day, this has significantly impacted Google users' ability to use ad blocker tools. The next one could have been the nail in the coffin when a website owner named Axel Springer sued Adblock Plus for affecting his ability to display ads on his website. By this time, studies had shown that ad blockers were eating away at 10 to 15% of a website's ad revenue. And with enough users, that could be billions of lost dollars. But here's the thing. Adblock Plus wasn't just gonna give in like internet fast forward did. They knew what they had, so they fought this case tooth and nail till the very end, and it took years. That's because it rose through the ranks all the way to Germany's Supreme Court, and in the trial, Adblock made the argument that ad blockers aren't some shady software. It's a tool to customize your user experience and control what data gets shared. And well, the German Supreme Court? They agreed. Around this time, the European Union took this decision and used it to make things official. Ad blockers were a legal tool that you could use. That almost brings us to present day. But just because something's illegal, it doesn't mean that it's a requirement, and it also doesn't mean that people want it around. So I wanna take a look at the future of ad blockers and see where we're really at now after about five or six years of them being legal in the entire world. Nowadays, ad blockers are incredibly common. Billions of devices have ad blockers enabled, whether it's through a VPN or separately. But if you're like me, you've probably run into issues using certain websites because you have an ad blocker tool. News websites are a great example. A a lot of them make you disable your ad blocker just to view the content. And like I mentioned, 10 to 15% of your ad revenue being lost to one program, it's really bad. And I fully get why they do this, because they're losing money to have you on their website. Why should they let you see the content? You're not paying for it. Website restrictions like this are getting more common as ad blockers continue to get more popular. But what other options exist? I like to look at YouTube Premium. They thought people don't like watching ads, so what if we gave them the option to remove them? For 16 99 a month, you can skip all ads on the platform on top of getting other features like downloading videos. And if a website asks me to whitelist their page on my ad blocker, I'll do it. I don't want to hurt them, but I also don't want to see ads on really shady websites that could potentially hurt me. All I know is this, ad blockers are legal. Ad blockers are here to stay. And it's time to start finding other solutions than to just tell people to stop using them. So my question is this, how are you using ad blockers? And would you change anything after watching this video? Let me know down below and after you do that check out this video I made last week where I explored online gambling platforms and their impact on addiction. I think you'll really enjoy it.